In this next lesson, we're going to paint this kettle. You'll continue learning how to approach textures and manage reflective surfaces. But before we begin, I want to show you a trick for those of you who are using an 8.5 by 11 printer. I designed and executed this course using only the bare minimum equipment required. So if you look closely, you'll see that my references are on letter sized paper. I'm even using plain printer paper. I'm going to show you how to combine smaller printouts by mounting them together. I did this to make sure no one is limited by their resources. Besides, this easy process may come in handy in future projects. The original reference won't fit on one sheet of 8.5 by 11 paper. So as you can see, I've broken the reference image up into two pieces. So for this exercise, if you have a printer that can produce larger than 8.5 by 11 prints, you can just download Kettle Without Grid JPEG. If you have a smaller printer, I've broken the image into parts for you. So download the Kettle Left and Kettle Right Side files. And if you don't have a printer at all, you can just download Kettle With Grid JPEG. I'll begin preparing these printouts to be mounted together by cutting along the edge of the line of the image that will line up to its missing part. Be sure you cut directly on the line. You don't want to lose any image or have a white line showing. Then do the same on the other half of the printout. Again, be sure to cut right up to the line and remove the excess paper. The two pieces of paper should line up perfectly. Now I'm going to cut the excess paper on the right hand side off, but making sure to leave a border. Which should leave you with the full image at full size. Now I want mine to be more rigid, so I'm going to mount it to a piece of foam core. But if you don't have foam core, you can just tape them together. Be sure to place your tape on the back of your printouts. Next, flip your printout over and using spray mint or any spray adhesive, cover the back of the image evenly. Cut a piece of foam core to a size a little larger than the size of the combined printouts to allow you some room for mistakes, and adhere the printouts to the foam core, making sure the two sides line up perfectly. Just a reminder, you have control of the pace of this course, and I believe the best way to get the most out of these lessons is to work alongside me. Watch me do a section, pause your video and repeat. It's a lot of information to remember where I made each cut, the steps I took to draw, or how I approached each area I painted. So please, try to work in tandem with me. That's why I call it a guided course. Finally, remembering to leave that quarter inch white border around the edge. Cut away that excess foam core, and once it's glued down, you may notice that doing this appears to enhance the quality of the image as well, even from a very basic printer. This is a great life hack for a do-it-yourself photo mounting, and for getting the best possible image to work from when you don't want to spend a lot on a high-end printer.